Welcome to part 3 of our tutorial on creating a skateboarding icon. Okay, so so far we have uh, we have done the version the 32 pixel outline and glyph versions. So it's time to work on the bigger sizes. Precisely, we are going to create the 64 pixel outline icon. Okay, starting point is the 32 pixel icon. We are going to grab this one, duplicate it, and we're going to double its sides, center. And uh, so here we go, we have the starting point for the 64 pixel icon. So, um, okay, some, some of you may already like this version the way it is right now. So if you do like it, you don't really need to create a 64 pixel version since we are dealing with vector icons. You could just use this one, just keep this one copy and uh, you know scale it as much as you want. Uh, even though it's fair to say that it's not going to look like this one because when you scale elements in places other than Illustrator uh, and uh, graphic tools, for example in a web page, the strokes are going to be scaled up as well. Anyway, let's close this parenthesis and let's move forward with the, the tutorial. So uh, I want to do something different here. So I don't want to have this uh, kind of uh, minimal version with uh, just small lines. I want to do something different. Uh, so let me show you. We have the, oh, here we go. We have the sport icons and uh, want to look at the 64 pixel outline icons and as you can see they resemble more the um, realistic body so let's do something like this so let me show you how you can take advantage one more time of the stroke values to create an icon like uh, the one I just showed you okay so um, first of all let's remove the roundness from the edges we don't need it in this case. Um, we are going to increase the sides of the stroke of each one of these elements. So we have the arms and shoulders, this leg. We're going to isolate this, this, this leg by uh, splitting, by removing it from the, from the body. We are going to take these elements here and increase the width to six to, yeah, to about six pixels. There we go. We're going to use a round cap. And okay, we have decent starting point. So let me show you, you just quickly uh, why we're doing this. Because when, you, when we are satisfied with the, with the final result, we can just take these elements here. We can expand and we can add stroke to these elements. So you can already see how we are going to create the the end result, the end version of the shapes. So let's go back to the version with the path and strokes. We can uh, start moving around, the, let's, let me turn on the grid. We can start moving around the pixels, the, sorry, the anchor points. Um, we can get this closer, move this here a little. We go up just a little bit. Then we can remove the runners from here. I forgot this, so we can move this up a little as well. So you can already see the icon is taking shape. We can uh, use a stroke value for the wheels. We can make them smaller. Now remember, it's not going to look realistic anyway because it's an icon. So the size doesn't have to be perfect. Now we can make the uh, skateboard, uh, we can add more details to the skateboard. So this is our reference. And so you can see there is a little bit of bending here. We can try to reproduce that as well. To do so, we can... So first of all, I'm gonna show you a, a trick. When you're working with the um, symmetric icon, we can just remove half of it and work just with one half, with the other half. We can add an additional anchor point Move this up a little, this a little bit more to the left, um, or maybe not. Then you can grab the pen tool and by pressing uh, command, 
you can drag. This is going to create some handles. And as you can see, you got more shape, which looks uh, similar to the one of a skateboard. Then you can select the element. You can select the reflect tool or press O. Click here on the, on the center here, which is going to be the center of your uh, reflection. You press, you can press uh, option to duplicate and just drag this element like that. Then you can select this uh, two anchor point and press command J to uh, so that you can join the, the, the two anchor points. Now they belong to the same path. Then you can remove this anchor point because we don't need it anymore. Here we go. Our icon is definitely taking shape. Now, since the nuclear icons um, at these sides, they can be customized and the stroke can be increased up to four pixels. To um, to understand uh, the amount of distances that I can use, uh, I'm going to increase the 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 weight of the stroke to four pixels. I just want to make sure, for example, that I don't have something like that when the users uh, increase the size of the of the stroke. So one pixel to separate the two elements. Well, it's fine, totally fine. So we can go back to two pixels in weight. Now we should definitely move a little, uh, make uh, the skateboard a little larger. And uh, yeah, for now let's, the skateboard, I think it's pretty much fine. Let's move forward with uh, the arms and the legs. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to remove this part here to move this back a little. There we go. Uh, what's next? We can, uh, I think we can expand the, maybe we should move everything here down one pixel. We can, just to do a quick test, we can expand this element. We can apply a stroke to it. And then we can select also the head and increase the size of the stroke. So we still have a little bit of margin here, so it's fine. The customization is going to work fine for the nuclear users. We can just go back to the shapes, to the, sorry, the element with the stroke. Okay, so now um, all the elements seem, seem to be in place. We can just move ahead and... Uh, expand the elements. We can start with the, um, uh, the leg and the arms. So I'm going to hide this one for the moment. Let's select these two, expand, and let's apply stroke. We're just going to use the um, eyedropper tool, select an element with, the, with stroke, and the Illustrator is going to apply the same effect. Now I'm going to take this point here, this anchor point, and move it down of one pixel. So I'm doing what we have already done before, uh, where, while we were working on the 32 pixel glyph icon. I want to do the same here, it's not as easy as it was here. So I'm just going to create a 5x5 uh, five five reference circle. Let's turn off snap to grid. Let's switch to outline mode. I can uh, drag this here. There we go. And then select this anchor point and move it here. Right. Now we can get rid of this. And uh, we can select these two anchor points and drag here when you see where you see the little circle is going to make a round edge. So this is a nice uh, illustrator feature. Once again, select the two anchor points and drag. Here we go. Our icon is definitely taking shape. Okay, so um, what about here? Um, we want to, we're going to remove this element. So if you do this and uh, Actually, Illustrator is selecting both elements, even though you split them using the scissor tool. That's because Illustrator created a group. So you can just ungroup the element by pressing Shift Command G, 
and then once again you can select this one and you can delete it. Now you can move this element, it's not snapping so let's enable snap to grid. You can move this element here. Then you can uh, take this element here, now I want to disable snap to grid and move this or here. Okay, maybe even a bit more. Here we go. Now I'm selecting these two anchor points. They belong to different paths, but I can join them by pressing Command J. We are getting very, very close. So I'm selecting the uh, arms and shoulders. Once again, pressing C to um, select the scissor tool. Click here and here. Then this one, once again, Shift Command G to ungroup, then this one. Then let's move this one here. And this one goes in the intersection as well. Select both, Command J. And we are basically, we are doing the same on this side as well. Move this one, move this one. Select both, Command J. Here we go. Now we want to add some roundness here. Select the anchor point and increase the corner by about six pixel. Seems about fine. Uh, okay, now we can uh, probably. I'm going to remove this uh, this part here just because I don't know. I don't like it very much. So I'm getting rid of this. I can change the uh, caps from but to uh, projecting cup. Here we go. Now we are really close. We can uh, um, select this part here, increase stroke, and you can see it's getting too close here. We can move it up over one pixel. Then I'm going to switch off the snap to grid and move this up a little bit. Just, you know, just so that we have a uh, space here even when the user selects uh, four pixels for the, for the stroke. Let's go back to two pixels. Let's bring back the leg, the back leg. Okay, here we go. Um, we can uh, change the cap in this case to round. We can expand it. With the eyedropper tool, I'm clicking on an element with stroke. Uh, once again, I'm selecting the scissor tool, selecting these two elements here, ungroup, and let's get rid of this one. And we are pretty much done. Let's change. Okay, no, this is good. We can select all of the elements and increase the stroke value. And as you can see, we have a little problem here. We can move this. more on the side so that once again we have just a tiny bit of margin here just in case the users want to use a four pixel grid a full pixel stroke now if we zoom back and if we zoom out and reduce the stroke value let's get rid of this uh, drawing we can uh, check our icon we can first of all we can translate it by minus two pixels here we go and i think yeah it looks very nice. So we we have covered a lot of ground in this tutorial, and you have basically you have seen how you can take advantage of uh, paths with stroke values uh, to um, edit shapes and come up with a nice uh, human figure icon. But in the next tutorial, the final one, I'm going to show you how you can turn this one into a glyph version as well.